Hi, and welcome to Prepping Essentials. Good morning, it's uh, seven o'clock on Saturday the 28th of November. Just making my way down to the land. And as always, not quite sure what we're going to get done today, but let's find out. Well, here we are down on the land. <coughs> Sun is slowly starting to get up. <laughs> it actually looks lighter on this video than it really is. <laughs> what I see in the screen of the camera is not uh, quite as light as it sees when I look across the field, but uh, there we go. Anyway, I'll get myself across to the cabin, get opened up. See how everything is. Certainly going to be a fire on this morning because it's been cold all week. Scraped ice off the car windows a couple of times this week. And we'll see what we can get done today. Well, just opening everything up. Uh, opened up the polytunnel because uh, there'll be a little bit more wood painting today. Got these uh, 3x2 lengths to paint. <laughs> Everything's looking distinctly wintry. Uh, strawberries are all yellow and red. Everything else has pretty much lost its leaves. Uh, outside, we've had quite a few frosts, so the potatoes are <laughs> looking very sad and sorry for themselves. Um, I don't know what to do with them, whether to leave them for another week or whether to just take them out before uh, before the frost gets into the ground. Don't know. I guess we'll make it up, as we usually do. Uh, <laughs> those uh, cauliflowers... <laughs> They're still hanging in. I'm surprised, as are the ones over here, which uh, were eaten by caterpillars. Uh, garlic's going to be there for the foreseeable future. Not be doing anything with that until next year. Uh, carrots, just starting to die back now, so they'll be ready for lifting shortly. Got the fire going in the cabin. I'm going to get myself a cup of coffee made. Might sit down and have a little cabin chat with you. Uh, it is nice to see the garden room finally completed. Just had a little look inside because we had had a little bit of rain this week just to see if it was leaking anywhere and it's not. So that's good. Um, trying this window open. It seems to be working uh, with the, the fire. Had no problems at all this morning lighting that. Uh, which is also very nice. I was getting a bit concerned. I will um, I will definitely though Do something about the chimney and give that a bit of a clean Oh kettles boiled look <laughs> Which is good I can have a coffee But uh, you can already see that there look the Fires blazing away quite merrily so I'll take advantage of that now and get myself sat down with a little cup of coffee. Well, it's uh, just hovering above freezing point outside, but uh, here inside, it's actually not too bad. It's warming up. Got a little bit of steam off the coffee and a bit of steam off my breath. But uh, even with the window of the garden room open, sitting here next to the fire, it's actually not too bad. Not quite sure what we're going to get done today because last week when I was doing the, uh, the garden room, just finishing off and making sure that um, all of the, the plastic sheet uh, was properly tied down. I climbed up onto the roof, well not actually onto the roof, but <coughs> on the top of the ladders leaning over the roof and uh, I was resting this left hand side ribs against the, uh, the rafters on the roof while I was stretching to get as far across uh, the roof line as I could with the, uh, the drill and the screws and I don't know quite what I did but I kind of had the roof line 
just wedged between two <laughs> of these ribs, which on reflection probably wasn't the wisest thing to be doing up there at height, but hey. Um, and I kind of slipped a little bit and just scraped across uh, these left-hand side ribs. And at the time, apart from a bit of a bit of a squeal, um, I didn't really think much of it, and I took it fairly easy the rest of the day. Um, but over the course of this week, this left-hand side, it's really been giving me a, a bit of uh, a bit of pain and agony. <laughs> And I can feel it now, just sat here, as I lean across to this left-hand side. Um, it's a bit uncomfortable, so I will be taking it quite steady today. There'll be no gymnastics or acrobatics going on. Um, but having said that, there are lots of little fiddly jobs. There always are lots of little fiddly jobs to do. Uh, I'm just watching the steam. <laughs> coming off my breath which does tell you I'm not kidding when I say it's hovering above freezing out there because it is it's a bit cool we've had uh, two quite hard frosts this week I was scraping ice off the car windows I think it was Tuesday morning it was particularly heavy um, so yeah winter's definitely here so it is nice to have had the garden room finished off and just give me that little bit more shelter um, I have brought, and I'll show you a little bit later on, um, a small diesel heater that I used to have in the uh, in the camper van. I have to think about that. <laughs> um, it's been sat for the best part of a year now, doing absolutely nothing except getting cold and wet uh, in a little box back at the house outside. So I'm going to have a little play with that today. Um, assuming it does work, I'll need to buy some uh, air intake pipe work and some exhaust pipe work. Um, because clearly it's come off the camper van and that was actually fixed to the underside of the van itself. Um, so I couldn't retrieve the piping and to be fair, it was a bit crappy anyway. It was old and rusted. Um, but that's going to give me something to play with today. I've got some wood to paint uh, because at some point I need to do the inside of the garden room, get some raised beds in and get some kind of support framework so that when the plants do go in they've got something to, to climb up. Um, I've got a bit of plumbing work to do, I've got <laughs> quite a bit of electrical work to do because I've got no lighting um, outside on the garden room. So I'll probably be running some electrical cable today as well. Lots of small fiddly stuff that uh, I probably won't be able to, to video much of it and would probably be a bit boring for you anyway if I did. Um, so I thought this morning before I did anything else I'd have a little bit of a cabin chat with you. Uh, so this might well turn out to be more of a cabin chat than a cabin work video. <laughs> um, there's all kinds of stuff going on right now. And as I look at um, YouTube land, all of the videos, um, predominantly in the US, I have to say, uh, but some also in, here in the UK, they're all focused around two main issues. Um, first of those is uh, something called <laughs> the Great Reset. Uh, and the other one is around um, I hate being careful with my words like this. Um, this medical crisis that we've got going on right now. Um, so those are the big two things of the day. Um, the first one, this great reset. Um, if I'm honest, I'm not buying into that. Um, I have no doubt that yes, there will be lots of um, not conspiracy theories, but lots of um, planning by certain governments to try and clamp down on the population um, and indeed we're seeing that now with this medical crisis but i'm not buying into this the government is going to 
suddenly pay everybody's debt off in exchange for taking possession of all of their property. Um, I'm not buying that. Certainly in the US because <laughs> unlike here in the UK, um, everybody in the US has got uh, access to <coughs> a wide array of equipment that they can use uh, to defend themselves and their rights. Um, I don't know how many people are in the US right now. I'm guessing 300 million plus. Got to be. Um, that's an awful lot of people with access to an awful lot of self-protection items. <laughs> <coughs> yes, I'm not buying the, re the Great Reset. Um, certainly not in my lifetime anyway. The other issue, the medical issue, um, I don't know where it's like in the US, but here in uh, Europe, and particularly here in the UK, it's absolute chaos right now. Um, we've gone from big lockdowns to little lockdowns, back to big lockdowns again. Uh, we're going through a national lockdown, which ends on, I think it's Wednesday, 2nd of December. Um, but the, the, the government's already announced that we're going into <laughs> pretty much an identical lockdown. They're just calling it um, different tiers, tier one, two, three, three of which is the most strict. And guess what? <laughs> I think there's about 1%, perhaps 1.5% of the population uh, in the lowest tier of lockdown. And the remainder are just... You may as well say we're in full lockdown again because it pretty much is. Um, up until Christmas, and then we get five days off <laughs> to enjoy Christmas. Um, and then absolutely guaranteed we're going to go back into full lockdown again, probably until March. Um, it's just chaos. And without going into it in too much detail, um, we're just, we've buggered the country. And anybody who doesn't see that and is still bleating on about working from home and uh, been paid for doing so, um, I don't know what planet they're on, but they're not on planet Earth or planet reality because we've killed the country. And the repercussions of that we will see next year for sure. The government's already um, hinted strongly uh, that times are going to be tough for several years, not just next year. Um, and I don't know why they're even hinting, because anybody who's got half a brain can see that if you are working, you're going to get taxed to death. And if you're not working, um, hang on to those pennies, guys and girls, because um, they're going to stop coming at some point. Uh, it's fantasy to think that at the extent that government is borrowing money now just to keep things afloat, um, it's nonsensical to think that um, these welfare checks are just going to keep coming. Uh, at some point, they're not. Um, and I could go on at great length <laughs> about my predictions for welfare and government service in the UK over the next few years, but um, I think this video is not the place for that. Anyway, despite all the little crises that we're having, I hope that uh, everyone is doing well and trying to bear up as much as you can with all this chaos that's going on around us right now. Um, myself, I'm really <laughs> desperately looking forward to the end of 2020. Um, whilst my general day-to-day -day life hasn't really been impacted that much because I am still going to work every day. I have done all the way through this medical crisis. Um, it is a, a tad annoying that things that I would like to do, um, just mundane stuff like shopping, um, I'm, I'm unable to do that. I can order stuff online, but it's not quite the same as going and looking and choosing myself. Um, building materials, uh, they are available. Um, some items aren't, 
there is a shortage definitely of some items um, but the actual mechanics of going and getting them uh, is difficult because there are lots of restrictions in these in these shops where you buy that stuff um, and I just really I'm, I'm tired of it now I think everybody else is tired of it now hence we're seeing a lot more protests and demonstrations about being locked down um, whether that's from a just a disruption to normal life perspective or whether that's from a a political civil rights kind of perspective um, because I understand that there is some degree of health crisis again I'm not going to detail about that otherwise this video will definitely get pulled um, but it is not right that government dictates when and where you can go um, and who you can and can't talk to um, liberties and rights have been massively eroded in this uh, health crisis and if we're not careful um, we'll not get those rights back there's already talk about um, kind of virus free passports been implemented and um, lots of speculation about not being able to travel unless you've had a vaccination not being able to go to work unless you've had a vaccination um, if I was on welfare benefits which I'm not um, not being paid them uh, unless you've had a vaccine there's all kinds of stories floating around and I suspect quite a few of them um, may well turn out to be correct I guess we'll have to wait and see how strong the will is of the people <laughs> and whether they put up with that kind of nonsense or not um, so yeah chaotic times and more importantly cha more chaotic times ahead um, next year will not be an easy year um, in terms of day-to-day -day living but more importantly in terms of availability of food and other goods um, supply chain has been massively affected I've said it loads of times manufacturing has been massively affected I've said that loads of times as well um, prices for goods and services will absolutely definitely be going up next year so it would be wise for people to take advantage now um, of both availability and price of anything that you need day to day not just food um, not toilet roll though <laughs> leave that alone um, and make the most of the opportunity now buy it now while it's there and more importantly while it's at the price it's at because next year it won't be um, and as the economic effects rumble on through next year the value of your pound dollar drachma dinari whatever it is you use um, will be dropping what you could buy for a pound today you will not be able to buy for a pound perhaps even a pound and a half or two pounds who knows let's see how far it goes in terms of scale of crisis with the economy next year but it is going to be big um, be under no illusion about that anyway I've been ranting on for a while my coffee is going cold as indeed is the fire I suspect I need to put some more wood on there um, I'll try and keep up with my videos as I go through the day um, there won't be anything majorly exciting unless of course I get the diesel heater working <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> I'll be sure to show you that um, but it won't be installed and properly operational because I do need to buy some pipe work for it and until I get the tape measure out in a minute and measure it up um, I don't even know what it is I'm buying yet let alone uh, get it here and delivered um, but I will try and keep up with it um, I may well as I reflect during the day come back and do another cabin chat I really don't know um, I do often say I'm making it up as I go along today is a absolutely truly make it up as I go along day um, I'm not feeling particularly great um, whether it's with this rib or whether it's with all of the nonsense that's going on right now around me um, and in terms of materials I can't do anything with the garden room until I've got access to uh, uh, some scaffold board or some similar kind of 
timber to make the framing for the raised beds. So apart from me talking to you, um, there might not be a great deal in this video, but I guess we'll find out as I go along. Um, and as I look at the edit later, it might or might not be popping up on YouTube. We'll, we'll see, I guess. Whatever you are and whatever you're doing, uh, please do stay safe. Please do try and remain sane amongst all this chaos that's going on. Um, don't buy into too many of the more outlandish conspiracy theories, um, particularly the Great Reset. <laughs> Uh, and if, however, you do know something that I don't know, and you've got some genuine knowledge to share, not repeating conspiracies, um, do leave them in the comments section. Uh, always interested to hear your views, um, and always interested to learn things that I didn't know from you. I'll catch up with you later on in the day and see how we're getting on. Just give you a quick look at this. Uh, this is that diesel heater I was talking about. Essentially there's a, a combustion chamber inside this plastic casing. Uh, there's a small, not the best place to see this, there's a small pump there. Bit of electrics. There's a thermostat down on the floor and that's a small diesel tank. Essentially Diesel from the tank comes through this pipe, which then feeds into the bottom of this combustion chamber via this little pump here. So it pumps diesel through, combusts in there. There's an air intake and an exhaust underneath. And then hot air comes out of this tube here. So I need to measure up the uh, heating tube the exhaust and the air intake tube get the measurements for those i'll uh, just temporarily rig up this tank somewhere on this wall over here uh, but i'll show you that once i've got it uh, connected and i've got my measurements taken it's a bit uh, ramshackle <laughs> just temporary fix for the diesel tank uh, down to the pump I've got uh, my battery box giving me 12 volt power and this uh, little thermostat powers on and the, uh, the fan is kicking in so I'll just give it a minute because it takes a couple of minutes to warm up and start pumping well, you can hear that now the pump is clicking through which is uh, pushing diesel well, it will be. The lines are all empty at the moment, so it's uh, trying to pump diesel through. Fan is picking up now. So hopefully we'll have some hot air coming out that other end shortly. Like I say, it's a bit ramshackle. I've just literally cobbled it together to see if it works, which it uh, sounds like it is. Certainly the fan's picking up. Now it's cold air coming out at the moment. We'll give it a minute and see what happens. But uh, I'm amazed it works. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Just been uh, dismantling this because uh, the uh, this diesel feed pipe that runs from the little pump here into the base of the unit uh, it was perished and was leaking diesel so I've just cut that slightly just trimmed it to get a decent uh, a decent seal so I'm just firing it back up again you can probably see well maybe not a little bit of exhaust fume coming out the back uh, so it's just literally warming up it's blowing cold air at the moment well that's it, I don't know if you heard that the burner kicking in as it fires up <laughs> what does it look like eh? talk about temporary fix <laughs> 
everything's just <laughs> strapped wherever but the main thing is it's working and I am surprised considering it's been sat there getting cold and wet for over a year all seems to be well I'll just give it a minute or two to warm up and we'll see if we get hot air coming out again and more importantly if that diesel leak has stopped well it sounds like a jet engine taking off <laughs> which is exactly where it should sound like and that now I might just uh, stand behind this for half an hour and warm up that's kicking out a lot of heat I can adjust it on this thermostat uh, the covers off because I had to wire it up but I can turn the temperature up and down just using this little spin dial but the main thing for me today is really just to get it working and prove the concept before I start permanently mounting it and uh, routing the air duct but well, that's kicking out a lot of heat now really pleased with that so success and a bit of progress well now I've finished messing around with that diesel heater we're back to more mundane stuff get these uh, 3b2s painted up and they can be drying they're not going to go anywhere today uh, Literally all I'm doing is getting them painted up. This one's already painted on one side. These two need doing completely so I'll just spend a few minutes getting these painted up and it'll be time for a coffee again. It's, uh, it's amazing how quickly the day goes, especially when you're messing around with electrics and such like but uh, anyway I'll crack on with these and uh, I'll come back to you in a little while rather than watching me as you do quite often just painting wood has to be done it's all progress no matter how small Well that's those 3B2s painted up, uh, two of them I'll need the other side doing but uh, hopefully I can do that tomorrow. I'm going to get myself back in the cabin now, have a little bit of a tidy up and get a coffee down me because it is chilly. <laughs> Fire's still going so that's good, keeping it warm but uh, with a bit of luck I can get that diesel heater working as well and properly set up and uh, that'll save me having to light a fire all the time I'm really quite pleased with that I have to say I didn't expect it to work not first time anyway it has been sat for a long time and I did expect a little teething problem which I got with the uh, the diesel fuel pipe from the pump to the actual burner itself but yeah really pleased I've got to uh, order some pipe in uh, this is the the air duct pipe for the hot air coming into the cabin and then we've got a smaller air intake pipe which feeds fresh air into the burner and then we've got this more heavy duty looking exhaust pipe to take the exhaust fumes away uh, from the burner but I'm gonna get myself a cup of coffee on the go and just sit down because actually all this bending and twisting it's uh, aggravating that rib that I've damaged and it is a bit painful now so I just need five minutes well I'm just having five minutes looking at this uh, this piping that I need or ducting that I need for the uh, diesel burner this rib is giving me a bit of grief I have to say I didn't mean to do any bending and twisting today but uh, 
clearly I have been. But we are making progress, which is what counts. Uh, you can probably tell I've been outside in the polytunnel in the garden room and it is a bit cool today. It's not so bad sat here by the fire. Um, the cabin actually is fairly warm compared to the garden room and the polytunnel, which are bloody chilly, I have to say. Having said all of that, it is nice just to be sat here and uh, even if it's small progress, it is progress. And it's all good experience. Messing about with uh, things like this diesel heater, it is all a learning curve. Um, I'm not a mechanic or engineer by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, so I am kind of learning as I go along. Um, but as you saw in the video earlier, at least it is working, so that's good. I need to build some kind of a, a box framework to set the uh, actual burner unit on uh, and to just kind of cover up the, uh, the pipe work that uh, feeds the, the air intake, the exhaust out and the, uh, the ducting into the cabin. Probably put the cabin ducting in where the, um, the toilet area is. It is the external wall that goes out into the garden room, so it's a logical place to feed in. Um, and then that warm air can blow across the cabin floor um, and hopefully heat the whole of the cabin. We'll see, I guess, as we go along. I don't think I'll be doing very much else today. I have got some electric cable to route. I might take a look at that. But I'm trying to avoid too much bending and stretching on this rib because the more I do, uh, <laughs> the more it lets me know that there is a little problem there. So I'll push on, drink the coffee, do a few bit, bits and pieces and uh, we'll see what the rest of the day brings. But I honestly don't think I'll be down here for that much longer. I'm just busy running some electrical cable which will uh, take power from those extra feeds I put in when I first did the cabin electrics so we've got a couple of spare power feeds just here so I'm running it through the uh, the internal wall in it's popping out behind this panel and then it'll run eventually I mean at the further minute <laughs> it's all over the floor uh, but it will run uh, along the roof line through the back of the shower area and then pop through that wall into the garden room to give me uh, some 12 volt power feeds into there and I can run power to that uh, diesel heater and uh, wherever else I want, lighting or whatever. So I'm just busy with that. I don't know if you can hear, <laughs> but it's raiding again. Cabin's a bit of a disaster area. There's tools and stuff everywhere. We've not had much daylight, so I'm just uh, recharging a couple of the uh, CCTV cameras just to keep them topped up. They were down to something like 50 odd, 55, 56%. So I'm just uh, recharging those while I can. And uh, this isn't doing my rub any good, <laughs> all this bending and stretching. But uh, we get this cable run, and once it's through into the garden room, I can relax a little bit. I know I've got 12 volt power. Well, I've got my uh, electrical cable run through to the garden room. It just runs up the side of the, uh, the wall, then pops through into the cabin, runs round the back of the shower area, across the roof line, joins up with all the other cables I've got, <laughs> run into the various lights and such, and then behind the uh, behind the board in, pops out in here, in the battery area, and then it's just run down. At the moment, it's just coiled up there. It will go into one of those two power feeds there uh, shortly. So, it's just about warm me out, all this stretching. It's not doing my ribs any good, but we've got some more progress. I'll have power now in the uh, garden room. Well, 
that's the cable in just uh, electric cable wired in just to prove the theory I've just uh, wired in a light just to make sure I have got power coming all the way through which we have so that's good well I am just about worn out <laughs> ruining those electric cables was something I shouldn't really have done because my rib is bloody painful now but it just needed doing so I've now got two uh, 12 volt power feeds into the garden room uh, one will do the water pump when the, when the watering system goes in uh, I'm not sure what I'll do with the other one could use it for charging and stuff the um, the diesel heater uh, draws far too much power for those cables that I've run in although it is 12 volt uh, it's something like 35 amps well there's no way that those cables I've put in can can handle 35 amps <laughs> of draw power they'd just fry um, so I need to have a little rethink as to how I do that what I could do is I could just rig a simple battery up uh, on a little solar panel so that it's constantly trickle charging um, and then draw from that. I could and I will probably use the, uh, the battery bank box that I've got, the one I used earlier when I was doing a test run. Um, I can use that as a temporary measure until I rig up something a bit more permanent. But I've yet to get all of the pipe work uh, that I need for that, that diesel heater, so there's no rush for that. I've proved the concept, so I know it works. I know what I need to get in terms of um, pipe work. So I'll just start hunting around trying to find that. As with everything you're trying to order now, um, stuff is just in short supply. Um, and of course you've got to get it. <laughs> um, some deliveries will leave at the house when you're not in, others won't leave in the house when you're not in. So it can be a bit tricky sometimes getting stuff delivered even if you're not there. Anyway, this coffee is just about cold. I keep meaning to drink it, but there's always some other thing needs doing. So I'm going to have a tidy up. It does look like a bit of a disaster zone. And... Uh, I think that'll be it. Um, I do need a, a shower and a bit of a bit of ibuprofen cream. I think on this uh, on this rib because <laughs> it's that nagging pain now. Um, it's not a sharp pain; it's just a dull ache. Um, so I'll get some cream on that. Anyway, hope you're having a good day, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Keep yourself safe. Keep an eye out on the news for what's going on around you. Um, but more importantly, don't neglect your preps, get topped up and continue to top up all the way through the Christmas period if you can. Um, I have a feeling you're going to need it come, come the new year. Well, that's the cabin locked up. Been a miserable old day today. It's been raining, foggy, very cold this morning. Uh, so I am ready <laughs> to go home and get showered and something to eat. The time just flies by. Polytunnel's locked up. It is a grey day. You see how grey it is. But it's a bit more progress today, so I can't complain. Well, that's it for this video. I hope there was something in there that was of interest to you. If you did like the video, please do click on the like button. Also, feel free to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. As always, I welcome any comments, questions or suggestions you might have. How's the diesel heater looking? Is that a, a good alternative to the wood stove? It's certainly a lot quicker <laughs> and more controllable than the wood stove. And uh, apologies if it was a bit of a a mix match and shorter than usual video today but my ribs have been killing me all day um, and they still are <laughs> hopefully that will be resolved by next weekend and we'll get back to some kind of business as usual 
But for now, thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.